Hello YouTube and welcome back to another book review from me, your host Logan Albright. Today I'm continuing my um, quest is too strong a word, but my, my goal to read a lot of the Booker Prize winners um, after having read um, Something to Answer For a couple weeks ago and being annoyed that Anthony Burgess was never won a Booker Prize but was nominated for one, I thought I would check out some of these Booker Prize winners and find out what all the fuss is about, see if they are good. Because when I looked at the list, it was full of authors and books that I've never heard of. And it makes me kind of sad that there's all these, like, authors who put out dozens of books who have won these major awards, the most prestigious awards you can win in literature, and yet nobody in the modern world has ever heard of or ever read their work. So I want to try to resuscitate some of them and bring some of their work back into the small little public consciousness of my YouTube following and see if we can find some hidden gems that people have forgotten about. So today I'm talking about The Elected Member by Bernice Rubens, winner of the 1970 Booker Prize, the second ever Booker Prize awarded, published in 1969. Uh, Bernice Rubens is a Welsh author, I believe, and I'm interested in Welsh things, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and this book came out in 1969 originally, and it concerns a family, a Jewish family, living in the East End of London, and their kind of tortured relationships with one another and with the world at large. The main character is Norman Zweck, and he was sort of a uh, prod child prodigy wonderkind who was famous for learning lots of languages at a very young age. He became a successful lawyer, and at a certain point around his 40th birthday, he had a breakdown and became a, a drug addict. And the type of drugs that he's addicted to is never specified. It's some kind of white pill, presumably some sort of opioid. Um, and, you know, initially took the drugs to maybe kill pain or, or relieve anxiety or something, but became hooked on them and has taken them in such quantities that they are causing hallucinations. He sees little silverfish insects all over the place and he gets angry that other people can't see them and calls them liars and believes that they are trying to deceive him and trick him and becomes very paranoid. He's basically confined to his bed in his father's house. His father runs a shop and his sister lives with them and helps run the shop. And they are, you know very destroyed by his his life choices and they're very upset about it and they're trying to help him but they're kind of at their wits end about what to do um and i i really like this book i thought it was really really good um i like it because it says a lot without really saying a lot like it's it's a very true feeling it feels very true to life it feels very honest portrait of a family um and it doesn't try to like beat you over the head with a message or anything, which I really can't stand when books moralize and do that. But there's so much there in just that kind of honest and frank depiction of a family's life that I think we can take lessons from and we can learn from. That's what I, I like about literature is like you learn about the human condition, not through people telling you about the human condition, but through people just depicting scenes from lives of people they know or, or imaginary lives of people that are similar to people they know or themselves. Uh, and I think this book does a really excellent job at that because there's so much to be said about the relationships between family members, romantic relationships, uh, the pressures that we put on one another, the the expectations that uh, society puts on us and that our family members put on us. Because in the beginning of the book, I'm very angry with Norman. I feel like Norman is incredibly selfish. He's putting his family through all this this horrible stuff. Um, and, you know, he is selfish and I don't, you know, ever really change that opinion of, of him throughout the book. But as you learn more about the backstory of the family, you start to feel a little bit, or at least I started to feel a little bit of pity and sympathy for Norman because um, it's not easy growing up in a family where you're a prodigy and your family has very high expectations for you and they expect certain things. There's a, a lot of stuff about one of his sisters who wanted to marry outside the Jewish faith and how, you know, how forbidden that was and how angry and how devastated their parents were. They kind of disowned her over that decision. And like, that's pretty awful. You know, you can see why children raised in an environment where the parents are very domineering and say, you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, you know, might try to retreat into some kind of private fantasy or into drugs or into other problems. You can see that motivation cropping up. And one of the things that I'm really fascinated with um, kind of outside of the scope of this book, but it, it touches on it. I'm fascinated with kind of psychosomatic illnesses or like Munchausen syndrome, people people choosing to make themselves ill 
in order to escape the pressures of life. And I think that's a lot of what we're seeing with, with Norman. He's basically, in order to get rid of the pressure of being a child prodigy, of being a successful lawyer, of having all this familiar familial expectations on him, he's retreated to this world of drug addiction and hallucination uh, as a kind of escape uh, defense mechanism, an escape. And I think that that's really, that happens a lot. And a lot of people want to deny that that happens because they can't imagine anybody wanting to be sick or wanting to be uh, in prison or in a hospital or things like that. But there's, you know, life is too much for a lot of people and they have to find ways of escaping it and, and getting rid of their responsibilities. And I think that happens a lot. And it's really interesting to me that that happens. And I think this book kind of covers that very nicely. There's also, you know, things about how we manipulate each other, how, um, kind of romantic attachments get in the way of family relationships and how those things are in conflict. Uh, and, and it goes both ways, you know, like Norman's behavior is manipulative to his family. His family's, his parents' behavior is manipulative to him, the way that they, uh, you know, will threaten and, and uh, basically emotionally blackmail the children and say, oh, what are you doing? You're killing your father. You're killing us by these decisions you're making. And that's another thing that I wanted to talk about a little bit because, you know, you hear a lot about in the modern era, in these days, you hear a lot about people saying, well, you shouldn't be allowed to say hurtful things to people. You shouldn't be allowed to use words that are emotionally distressing to people because that's harm. You're causing harm to people just the same as if you're causing, um, you know, committing violence against them. You hear words or violence and things like that. And I've never bought into that view because whether or not the things you say or the things you do cause emotional distress to other people is not really dependent on you, it's dependent on them. It's like the things that they've chosen to care about. And this is a good example of like, you know, for some parents in some religious families or some traditional families, like a child choosing to marry outside of the religion is, or outside of the race or outside of uh, the sexual orientation is completely devastating to them. And they would might as well, they'd almost be happier if their child killed themselves or something like that. Um, they just consider that completely hurtful and a betrayal and they despise their children for it and they disown them for it. But like nobody would say you shouldn't be allowed to marry outside your religion because it'll upset your parents. Like you got to live your own life and you need to make the choices that are right for you. And if it hurts other people, that's sad, but it's not your fault. It's, it's their fault for putting you in that position. And I think that's really true. And so that's something I was thinking about in this book because, you know, the choices that these people make do hurt each other. But you can't say that, you know, you should have to father, follow in your father's uh, profession because if you don't, it'll upset him. Like, you, you just can't put that requirement on people because they have to be able to live their own lives and make their own choices and come up with their own solutions to problems in their lives. And so I think this book is a good commentary on that as well, of trying to escape that, uh, that kind of emotional blackmail that some families put on their children by saying, you have to do this or else you're going to, you know, emotionally kill me. You're going to devastate me. I have to disown you. Um, so anyway, that's sort of, I'm not going to go too much into the plot of this. I mean, there, uh, uh, Norman gets committed to a mental institution fairly early on, and you see what life is like in the mental institution. Insanity is a real topic that I'm fascinated with as well. Um, so I like that. This is, you know, it's not quite one flew over the cuckoo's nest, but it has a little bit of a similar vibe to that. Um, and I thought it was a really interesting book. I, I wouldn't put it up as one of my like all-time favorite books, but I, I'm really glad I read it, and I enjoyed it, and I got a lot out of it. And I think... Um, Books like this that are just sort of true dramatizations of what some families are like and what life in some environments is like can teach us a lot about the human condition and about our own place in the world and about our relationships and about how to treat other people. Um, and I, I like that. I like books that you can get something from, books that you can take away something from. You know, one of my complaints that I often voice on this channel is when I read kind of modern modern literature, um, a lot of like fantasy novels or sci-fi novels or things like that is how empty they feel. You know, they may be a good story or they may, you know, be well written technically, but I always feel like it's empty calories. Like, okay, I digested that. Now what? I don't have anything else to show for it. It's just, there doesn't leave me with anything. And the thing about great literature is you carry it with you and you carry lessons from it with you. And you think about it for a long time after you've finished reading it. So I really liked The Elected Member by Bernice Rubens. I recommend it if you are into um, just kind of naturalistic family dramas or books about insanity or drug addiction or anything like that. Books about relationships, you might enjoy it. And I'm going to continue my quest. I already bought a couple other uh, Booker Prize winners that I'm going to continue to read. So hopefully I will continue to enjoy those because so far all the ones I've read I have liked. 
That's all I have to say for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, leave me comments down below telling me what you thought of this book or other books by the author or other Booker Prize winners. And make sure you check back next week for another video because I release a new book review every single week as long as I can keep up with my reading pace. Thanks so much for watching. I've been your host, Logan Albright, and I'll catch you next time.